Good morning, church. Welcome to First Presbyterian on this first day of May, May 2nd, 2021. We are glad you're here with us today. Let's start off our morning with a call to worship. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own understanding. In all your ways, know him and he will make your paths straight. We honor the Lord with our possessions and with our lives. For the Lord brings healing to our bodies and the strengthening of our spirits. Do not despise the Lord's discipline, for God loves us. Let us worship God, our firm foundation.
Please join me in our litany of confession. If we say we have no sin, we are lying and the truth is not in us. But if we trust God, we confess our sin and find freedom. Let us humble ourselves and confess our personal and corporate sins. Holy God, we have trusted in idols instead of in your love. We seek the American dream more than we seek the kingdom of God. Forgive us for our apathy when our neighbors are hurting and teach us to love as Jesus loves. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Do not be discouraged, church. Jesus has given us the Holy Spirit, and we are empowered to do good works for God's glory. Because of Jesus, we are forgiven and made new. Believe the Lord and live in God's love. Please join me in our affirmation of faith, which comes from of the gospel from chapter 10 of the Westminster Confession of Faith. God, an in infinite and perfect love, having provided in the covenant of grace through the mediation and sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ, a way of life and salvation, sufficient for and adapted to the whole lost race of humanity, freely offers this salvation to all people in the gospel. In the gospel, God declares love for the world and desire that all people be saved, reveals fully and clearly the only way of salvation, promises eternal life to all who truly repent and believe in Christ, invites and commands all to embrace the offered mercy, and by the Spirit accompanying the word, pleads with people to accept God's gracious invitation. Before we hear the scriptures read and preached today, let's pray. Holy God, we love hearing from you. And we thank you that you have given us your word through inspired prophets. They bring your word to us. And we pray now that through the power of the Holy Spirit, we would hear you speaking to us in a way we can understand and obey. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you. For God, you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. What's up, FPC youth and congregation? It is me, Mr. Toby, coming to you live from the Youth Lounge. So today, we're going to continue our look into discovering Jesus. And today, we're going to be talking about how we can live for Jesus. Now, if you look here, I brought in from my office this cool lava lamp. Some of you uh, adults in the congregation may know what a lava lamp is. And they probably had some in their bedrooms when they were teens. But this one was gifted to me by Mr. Lon Miller. So, Lon, if you're in the congregation today, still taking good care of it, buddy. Anyway... This lamp is really cool, and when we turn it on, it kind of lights up the room. Also, when you turn it on and let it get warmed up, all this cool stuff starts bubbling up. So it looks like lava, and it looks really cool. So what I'm going to do, we're going to turn it on, I'm going to show you how it's done. Uh-oh. Uh, wait. I forgot the most important part, the light bulb. I took the light bulb out because I didn't want to break it. So, what we can know about Jesus is that when we plug into Jesus, Jesus gives us life. So when I screw this light bulb in 
and put the lava lamp back on and turn it on, you will see light. Whoa, pretty cool, huh? Just as the lava lamp needs the light bulb to glow brightly, we need Jesus to bear that good fruit and show us how to shine brightly. Jesus is our source of life, just as the light bulb is for the lamp's source of power. So what we can gather from this is that when we plug into Jesus, Jesus turns on the light inside us. And soon all this stuff starts to go crazy. When Jesus is within us, we can do whatever we want. And all God's children said, Amen. Our Old Testament reading for today comes to us from the book of Genesis, chapter 12, verses 1 through 8, the story of the call of Abram. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was seventy-five years old when he departed from Haran. Abram took his wife Sarai, and his brother's son Lot, and all the possessions that they had gathered, and the persons whom they had acquired in Haran, and they set forth to go to the land of Canaan. When they had come to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land to the place at Shechem, to the Oak of Moreh. At that time the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord, who had appeared to him. From there he moved on to the hill country on the east side of Bethel, and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and invoked the name of the Lord. This is the word of God for us, God's people. Our New Testament reading this morning comes from John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. Those who abide in me, and I in them, bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Who do you trust in your life? Think about the people that have come and gone during your time on this planet. And I want you to picture in your mind this person or persons that you can trust completely without fail. I hope that whoever it is that you have in your mind is someone that can make you undoubtedly smile from ear to ear. Trust, though, has a lot of different differentiations to it. Trust can be ironclad. Trust can be easily broken. Trust can be regained. Trust can be given. Trust can be lost forever. Trust can be love. Last week when I was preaching in Shelbyville, we chatted about how humanity knows how to love Jesus. Starting in. 
Okay. <laughs> Sorry. You can start from like just a sentence before. Okay. Last week when I was preaching in Shelbyville, we chatted about how humanity knows how to love because Jesus first showed us what love really is by sacrificing himself for us. The authenticity of Christ and how Christ demonstrated that full, passionate love is the only way that we know how to do it. And it's the exact same thing with trust. We can trust because God has trusted in us first. And that sets the perfect example. We don't put people that we have just met to the test on trust. You don't meet someone for the first time and say, okay, it's time for the trust test. Let's see how you stack up. Trust comes over time, or when you take the time to learn about someone. Trust comes with patience, understanding, and comfort. However, God trusts us from the very beginning. You can trust God right now, right this very second. Even if you are far away from faith, you can still trust God. Jesus tells us that I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. God is telling us in the scripture that humanity can trust God to provide everything that we need. When I think of pruning the branches, I always think of my mother sitting outside on a hot, steamy summer day in her flower beds. I come over and say, Mom, what are you doing? She say, I'm pulling weeds. What do weeds do to a garden or a flower bed? Weeds can cut off the food supply to your plants and flowers. The weeds take up all the necessary nutrients that your plants need to survive. And that's why people pull weeds. The weed in our life, though, is sin. Sin grows like a weed, and without proper care, the weeds completely take over and choke the life out of us. And the worst part is often the times we don't trust our holy gardener to come and clean us up. When we don't trust, the weeds keep growing and no fruit is born. I was personally very far away from God at one point in my life. My father had just passed away. I was at a job I couldn't stand anymore. And my branches were not growing anything. But something was telling me that I needed more. Something in my heart was tapping me on the shoulder saying, I want to clip your branches. Let me pull the weeds in your life. But I wasn't ready for it. I wanted to be selfish and keep what I had going on for myself. I wasn't interested in trusting that God could provide a better mindset for me. But then everything changed. You see, I used to be someone who was scared about everything that I couldn't control. I would always hope that things would go right because I didn't want to deal with things going negatively. But once I learned to trust in God, I started to notice a peace come over me. Once I started to let God in and let my dead branches get clipped, I noticed that things were looking better. I was trusting more and more. When we get to that trust in life, when we trust Jesus to do his will in our hearts, anything that happens to us, good, bad, or indifferent, has the same outcome, peace. In my ordination process, I have to meet with my committee on preparation for ministry. And at least two or three times, they've asked me this one question. They asked me, just how do you intend to pay off seminary? Because it's very expensive, you know. And both times I give them the same answer. I said, I guess I'll just start paying it off month to month. That's all I can come up with. But the crazy thing is, though, that I, I don't go home worried or I lose sleep over it. I even try to convince myself that I should be nervous and worried but I just can't bring myself to it because I have to come to understand and trust over a very long time that God has put me in this spot and God will provide. 
Now, does that mean I won't see any obstacles? Absolutely not. Those obstacles will always be there to try and trip me up. I will still sin against God and do things that I should not do. It's like Matthew said to me this week. Matthew said to me in his office that humanity has and will continue to spit in God's face. We spit in Jesus' face when he was being tried. But the difference is that we know that God will still be there for us when we spit. God will still want and be available to pull the weeds of our lives and love us just as much. One thing is for sure with us humans is that we always need reminders that God is in fact on our side and will always have our best interests. Did you notice today that the New Testament scripture from John seems to be on repeat? The scriptures want to beat into our heads that Jesus is the vine and that we are the branches and that we are to abide in him. It says it over and over and over again. Repetition. Jesus provides for us forever as long as we hook into that vine. I read in a commentary on this passage earlier this week that said, Jesus invites us to an abiding love in him, a love that is committed. That is sure. When I read this, I thought about what if we inserted the word trust in there too? Jesus invites us to an abiding trust in him, a trust that is committed. That is sure. And it still works. The loving intimacy that we need and that Jesus seeks from us is nothing short of important. He already abides in us, like the scripture tells us. However, it is up to us to trust enough to abide in him. If trust becomes our downfall, our branches wither and soon are gone altogether. And when we enter those dark times, we can rest assured that Christ is still there, waiting for us. Remember, it is never too late to cast our trust into our Creator and our Redeemer. I long for that relationship with Jesus. Some of my favorite trustworthy relationships stem from situations where I have no clue what I'm doing. And somebody is there with me who knows a lot about the situation. And most often these situations deal with fixing things around my house. I would much rather have someone come and help me who knows everything about it. That way I can say without fail, I trust you. I'm following your lead. Our faith life is this very situation. When we follow Jesus, it becomes vitally important to be able to say, I trust you, Lord. Matthew told me a story this week about when he woke up and thought he was struggling about not knowing what he was doing in life. Story of a minister's life, right? But Anna Marie said, and I quote, it is a good thing that you are following somebody who does. I can't think of any better way to put it. When we trust in God, the branches start to bear fruit and the weeds start to get pulled. Amen.
Church, what a blessing it is that our Lord invites us to have a meal together and with God. And so we ask you at this time to gather some bread, gather a beverage as we celebrate this meal spiritually together, even though we are physically distanced. But it is God that brings us together. And this meal is for us. Jesus says, come to me, everyone who is weary, all of you who are carrying heavy burdens, let me give you some rest. Sit at my feet, learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. With me you will find rest and peace for your soul. Let's pray. Holy God, in the beginning you created everything out of nothing with a word. You are amazing. And after you've created all good things, you made us in your image, and you called us very good, male and female. And Lord, when we rebelled against you, when we chose our way over your way, when we refused to trust in your love for us, you didn't abandon us, but rather you reached out to us. Even when we were sinning, even when we were your enemies, you came close to us. You gave us your word through the prophets, and then you came in the flesh, in the person of Jesus Christ, to show us what you are like. And you spread out your arms on the cross, and you gave your life out of love for us, to redeem us, to make a way back to God, a way back to trust. And then, Lord, when you ascended into heaven, you sent us the paraclete. You sent us the Holy Spirit, your very spirit to live in us, to keep us close, to inspire us to good works, to help us to continue and carry on your mission here on earth, to be your body, your hands and feet. Oh, holy God, you have given us such blessings. And on top of it all, this blessing, this meal, this reminder of your continued presence with us, how you nourish us body, mind, and spirit. You are present with us in this sacrament, and we praise you. Holy God, set these common elements aside now that we've gathered in our homes, wherever we are, from common to sacred use, that they may be a reminder to us of the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And church, I share with you what has been passed down through the generations that on the night that our Lord Jesus Christ would be betrayed by his disciples, by his closest friends, he sat at table with them and he broke bread. And after giving thanks to God, he said, take and eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after they had had supper together, our Lord took the cup and he said, with this cup, I make a new covenant, a new promise, the forgiveness of sins, through the shedding of my blood. Every time you drink this, remember me. For church, as often as we take this bread and drink this cup, we remember our Lord's death until that day he comes again and we're all drawn to the wedding feast of the Lamb around the same table with all the saints that have gone before us. This is the bread of heaven, Christ's body broken for you. Take and eat. And this is the cup of a new covenant, Christ's blood shed for us for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus said, drink this, all of you. Let us pray. Holy God, once again, you have shown your faithfulness to us in this meal. We are not alone. We have communed with you, and we have communed with all the saints here on earth who call on your name, and we have communed with the angels in heaven and with the saints that have gone before us. Thank you for making us your family, adopting us in, Jews and Gentiles alike, male and female, slave and free. We belong to you. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. And as you have given yourself for us, may we give ourselves for others to bring God glory and to show your love. 
Amen. God has given us so much. And what we have, like Abram, we have to be a blessing to other people. So as the Spirit leads us today and this week, let us be generous with what we have for the sake of other people, for the sake of God's glory. Please join me in our prayer of dedication. Ancient of days, you are throned in glory. Before you all knees bend and all voices pray. We have beheld your glory, Lord, and offer you gifts in praise of your name. May your light so shine that all creation discerns your dominion, and may whatever we do bring you honor and praise. It is so good to know that God loves hearing from us and God is always there bending God's ear close to us. So let's take this opportunity to talk to our Abba in heaven. Holy God, you know the joys and the fears on our hearts today. You know our anxieties and our dreams. You know all about us and you love us so we can trust you you can work all things together for our good. We lift up our own need before you. We lift up the needs of others, those whom we love. We lift up our neighbors, those that we know and those who are still strangers to us. We lift up all people before you, Lord, that they might receive your grace, and that you might be as wonderful to them as you have been to us, and that we might be as good to them as we have been so taken care of. Holy God, we thank you for those who are working right now for our good, who are doing the daily work to keep this world going, those who are sacrificing for the good of others. Lord, we pray for those special circumstances. We are grateful. We pray now as you taught us to pray together, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Church, receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.